chase, but you act like you don't. All right, well, we have officially left Saipan and have made it to Guam. Now, uh, everybody knows you know, about the attack on Pearl Harbor, but what people tend to forget is that Pearl Harbor was not the only American territory that was attacked by the Japanese at that time. Uh, shortly after Pearl Harbor, uh, the Japanese launched an invasion into the Philippines. Uh, and then they also launched an invasion right here on Guam. And there was a, just really a small provisional force that, that was located here, and they got completely overran by the Japanese. So, in Operation Forager, first target was going to be Saipan. The second target was going to be right here on Guam. Guam was codenamed uh, Stevedore, if I remember correctly. And tasked with retaking Guam back from the Japanese was going to be the 3rd Amphibious Corps, which was made up of the 3rd Marine Division, uh, the 1st Marine Provisional Division, and the 77th Infantry Division. Now, for the invasion of Guam, there were going to be two different beaches that were seven miles apart that the Marines were going to land on. I'm on the northern landing beach right now, which is uh, called Asin Beach. And if you look at this beach, it's kind of flanked by two peninsulas that make it look like uh, a crab claw. So you can see the, the southern crab claw uh, there in the distance. And uh, the beaches were, were codenamed uh, blue uh, to the south there, and then green, and then off to my right, and we've got to kind of look in the sun for a second, uh, down here would be red two and then red one uh, furthest to the north. And this beach right here was going to be assaulted by the 3rd Marine Division. So the, the day for the invasion of Guam was set to be July 21st, and it was codenamed uh, W Day. But before any of that could happen, uh, there is a, a huge reef out here that had to uh, have some lanes opened up there were also mines uh, right here in, in this bay. And the task of clearing all of that out went to UDT teams three, four, and six. Uh, UDT stands for Underwater Demolition Team. These are the, the original SEALs, the, the original frogmen. And uh, these guys did some amazing work and just along this beach alone cleared over 600 obstacles in the days leading up to W Day. They have a, a few plaques and memorials here along the uh, 3rd Division's landing beach. And uh, this one says, at 0829 hours, July 21st, 1944, first assault troops of the 3rd Marine Division under the command of Major General Allen H. Turnage, USMC, crossed this beach to begin the recapture of Guam from a determined enemy. Some of the fiercest fighting raged in the hills opposite before it spread to most of the island and organized resistance ceased on August 10th. Guam was the first American territory retaken from an enemy. The island's capture opened the heartland of Japan to attack and hastened the end of the war in the Pacific. And the, the high ground that they are talking about is this right here. Now, uh, of course, like with many battlefields, this looks different than it did in 1944. Um, in 1944, there would have been uh, coconut groves and rice paddies and things like that. But the objective of the 3rd Marine Division was to get up here onto these ridges and this plateau right back here. Uh, we're going to go up there in a little bit uh, after we show a few other things and uh, 
maybe try and get a, a greater vantage point of this beach and see what it looked like from the Japanese perspective. Oh, also right here at this little hill that you see, uh, the Japanese used Chamorin, basically slave labor, to carve out like caves and dugouts in the side of this hill where they could have gun emplacements that would provide flanking fire to the Marines that were landing on this beach. Oh my gosh, I was so excited there for a second because I thought that I had found Wilson. But this is an imposter. That's not a volleyball, that's a soccer ball. So, anyway, sorry Tom Hanks, I tried. I've moved over now to Ace and Point. This is that southern crab claw on uh, the landing beaches that I was talking about a moment ago. And uh, they have a, a monument here that honors the men who helped to retake Guam. This was put up on the, the 50th anniversary. So we'll just take a, a quick walk around. Uh, we have the 77th Infantry Division. They uh, landed on the southern beach. We'll be talking about them later. Also the U.S. Coast Guard, the U.S. Army Air Corps. One thing that I forgot to mention is that there would be some lessons learned from Saipan and at Guam in the weeks preceding the invasion. Uh, this island was going to receive a massive bombardment from the U.S. Army Air Force to soften up targets. Uh, and then, of course, we have the uh, 3rd Marine Amphibious Corps, U.S. Pacific Fleet, U.S. Navy. So this is the combined assault force. we got the Seabees who are going to be moving in and constructing airstrips and getting things done after the island is secured or after the areas are secured and then the first provisional marine brigade who we will be talking about in the next episode and then the division who landed right here where we are standing now the third marine division okay let's move up to uh, to the high ground and get a look at this landing beach from the japanese perspective All right, well, we just got up here on top of this plateau. And uh, before we get out and look over the, the landing beach, probably need to take a second to talk about the Japanese defenders of this island. So the whole Northern Mariana Island group uh, was being defended by the Japanese 31st Army. And the commander of the 31st Army was a guy by the name of General Obata. Uh, he was actually, I think in Palau, uh, whenever the invasion began or he was on his way back. He was supposed to go to Saipan, but ended up getting diverted to Guam. Uh, under the 31st Army, you're also going to have the 29th Division of the Japanese Army uh, here on Guam. These are guys who had fought in Manchuria and had been transferred to Guam. Uh, they're going to be commanded by a guy named General uh, Takishi Takahina. And uh, anyway, also on Guam, there's just like this hodgepodge of other groups of units that had literally floated in uh, after, you know, being completely harassed and, and attacked by U.S. submarines. But long story short, here on Guam, you're going to have about 18,500 Japanese defenders whenever the Americans land on W Day. All right, walking out on this overlook here, and yeah, I've seen pictures online, but being here, you definitely get a feel for what a commanding view the Japanese had over this beach. And uh, <laughs> just imagine being one of the Japanese defenders standing here looking out at this huge armada that that is bearing down you know what just happened to the japanese forces up in saipan and you know that you don't have any naval power or any air power that's going to compete with the americans and you've only got half 
of the number of troops that they did on Saipan defending a larger area, well, seeing all these Marines coming in would probably be enough to make you about evacuate your bowels. And uh, if, we, if we look here, okay, so there's that southern crab claw again on the left side of the invasion beach. Uh, so right there, that would be blue beach on the left and then green beach uh, so you would have had i think the 9th regiment attacking there and then the 21st regiment uh, just to their left and then over here on this side well that would be red 2 and then red 1 which would have been assaulted by the the third uh, regiment of the third marine division and um on july the 25th well the commander of the 29th division of the japanese army ordered a bonsai charge that was going to come right down through here and of course uh, it would fail uh, but not without taking out a lot of uh, good marines in the process but yeah, here's, here's kind of a, a bird's eye view of the 3rd Marine Division landing beaches. They have another memorial here at uh, the Overlook and this one right here I just really like. Uh, this is going to be walking through the, the war here in Guam. And they're they're going to be in it right from the very beginning. So it, it starts off with uh, the attack, which occurred on December 8th. We're on the other side of the international dateline. Uh, so the attack on Guam occurred really an hour after the attack on Pearl Harbor. American forces are overrun. And then we have... Japanese occupation, where the Chamorro people have their possessions confiscated uh, and are uh, being indoctrinated with uh, what was called the spirit of Japan and had to endure rationing and forced labor and beatings and execution. Uh, near the end, like right before the Americans landed, they were put into concentration camps here on the island. And then on July 21st, 1944, we have 55,000 Americans land on the west coast here, and we have liberation so at that point many of the Chamoran people would come alongside the American troops and act as scouts as the uh, army and Marines started making their way north here on the island of Guam Here's something else that they have at this memorial that really drives home the, the cost of what it took to, uh, to defend and take back Guam from the Japanese. So here it says, in memoriam lest we forget United States Marines and sailors who died defending Guam from December 8, 1941 to October 22, 1942. And we have these names right here. And then it gets to the U.S. Marines, soldiers, sailors, airmen, and Coast Guardsmen who died during the battle for Guam. And then you have all of these names, like John Anderson, and Raymond Arnold, and Harold Baker. All the way over here to names like uh, Charles Martin and Robert Nolan. All of these guys were killed in the Battle of Guam. But as we've mentioned in the past, it's not just the, the soldiers, sailors, and Marines who are affected. It's also the civilians. So here they also honor and remember the people of Guam who died during the invasion and occupation and liberation. And look at all of these names. 
So like uh, Rita Bamba and um, Juan Guerrero. And then it says the people of Guam who suffered personal injury, forced labor, forced march, internment by the Japanese. And the names just go on and on and on. All right, so there you go. Uh, that is a, a little bit of a, a look at the assault of the 3rd Marine Division here on the northern landing beaches here on Guam. We're going to move down uh, now to the, the southern landing beaches where the 1st Marine Provisional Brigade landed. And there we're, we're going to be able to see things a, a lot more clearly uh, as far as what the Japanese did to defend this island against an American attack. But we'll be jumping into that in the next video.